Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it with another episode of Giants Talk. Today, we got some real spicy news out here. The New York Giants released their first unofficial depth chart of the 2019 season. Now this chart came out today, um, Tuesday, August 6th, 2019. Right after, like it was just a couple hours after their training camp practice ended, practice, public practice number nine, which I will be getting video out to you guys soon. But when they dropped this uh, depth chart here, I was like, I gotta go over it with y'all. And yes, I'm gonna go through or try to go through every position that they have on here with each people, each person that they have listed on here. So since that, we're gonna be going through all positions. Might as well get started. Let's start on the offensive side. The first wide receiver position, starting Golding Tate, second wide receiver Benny Fowler and Russell Shepard, third Alonzo Russell, Britton Golden, fourth Reggie White, and Damari Scott. Now first things first, when looking at this depth chart, I realize we do have a lot of wide receivers because on the second wide receiver spot, um, we got Sterling Shepard, then Cody Latimer, Russell Shepard, then Darius Slayton. Then TJ Jones and Amba Editao. I'm gonna try and just put up a screenshot of the chart for you guys so what I'm saying doesn't sound too confusing, but we do have a good amount of wide receivers here. We're currently going in 13 deep, and I'm not sure how many wide receivers are allowed on the roster, but obviously the final roster would be 53 man one. I'd say we're probably gonna go in with six or seven at the most. I'm not too sure there, but as for guys that would definitely make the cut, obviously Sterling Shepard and Golden Tate, which is why they're listed as the starters. Um, I think Darius Slayton and Cody Latimer are definitely going to be there. Benny Fowler and Russell Shepard, they're guys who have the potential to crack the 53-man roster, definitely have the potential to do so. But then after them, it's like it's just a matter of, uh, of the amount of space we have left. Like I would really like for Reggie White and maybe Amba Editawo to make the rosters, but at that point, I think it will be all about space, and unless they show tremendous skill and tremendous work ethic and potential, I don't, I don't really think they might make it. They could be on the practice squad. Definitely, they could have a spot on the practice squad, but that's another day. So as of right now, our wide receiver core is looking pretty good. I mean, we all know Sterling Shepard. He's projected to be back for the uh, first game of the year. I, I'm still in favor of him sitting out if he needs to, Golden Tate, the, there was an article out there by some Giants beat reporter, not sure how much truth there is to it, but apparently the result of his appeal was supposed to be released tonight, uh, whether or not he's going to get it taken back or whether he's going to miss the first four games, whatever it is. We still got going to, Golden Tate going into the season, he's healthy, we just won't have him for four games at the worst. And we got Benny Fowler and Cody Latimer, two reliable guys that we could have on the outside, really good number three options. Not much else there. Good number three options. Cody Latimer could be a great weapon on the punt or kick return game, which is where he's also listed on special teams. And after that, like I said, two guys I would love to see, Darius Slate and Reggie White. All depends on spacing, though. So going on to the offensive line, we got left tackle, Nate Solder, then second, Chad Wheeler, third, Brian Mahilik, fourth, Paul Adams. Uh, this is basically how I expected it to be, rolling in with four guys there at left tackle with Chad Wheeler doubling as a backup for the right tackle. No problems there. I love to see a lot of depth at the offensive line position. Same thing for left guard Will Hernandez, then Victor Salako, Nick Gates, and Malcolm Bunch. I might be pronouncing his name wrong. Center John Jalapio, Spencer Pooley, James O'Hannigan. So as of right now, they have John Jalapio slated as the starter. Um, I'm assuming that he's done enough in training camp and that they've seen enough from him the previous year to say that he's the definite starter. Pat Shermer had some comments about it. He says he believes in both Jalapio and Pulley that they're both two good guys that know the system well and work in the system well. He's still not ruling out that maybe Pulley could beat out Jalapio for the job. Whatever the case is, I am super happy that we have two amazing centers there, two really good centers, and whoever's the starting job, I think they would deserve it. Right guard, we got Kevin Zeitler, Evan Brown, Chad Slade. That's the only offensive line position where we have three people instead of four. Not too worried though, Kevin Zeitler, in my opinion, top five right guard in the entire league, and he's been healthy for most of his career. Uh, you know, knock on wood for him to stay healthy throughout the season, but I expect great things from Zeitler. In my opinion, he's our best offensive lineman right now. 
And at right tackle, we got Mike Zemmer, Mike Remmers, uh, Chad Wheeler, Brian Malik, and George Asafo J. So right tackle and left tackle, they have two of the same backups, but right now Mike Remmers is slated as a starter. The only thing I'm surprised by here is that George Asafo J is put as the fourth man down. Yes, he was a seventh round pick, but I thought, and this was just my opinion, he could have been something more. I thought he probably would have given Mike Remmers a good run for his money. I guess not. Um, George actually hasn't been seen on the field too much. I'm not sure if there's an injury there or if it's just a matter of limited snaps. Then on to tight end. Same thing with wide receiver. There's two tight end um, rows. Evan Ingram, Scott Simonson, CJ Conrad. Then Rhett Ellison, Garrett Dickerson, and Isaiah, Isaiah Seawright. Now, I only think we're going to be rolling in with three, four at the most tight ends this year. Obviously, Evan Ingram and Rhett Ellison. I think that's your number one, number two. Then Scott Simonson, CJ Conrad. Uh, CJ Conrad, somebody I really liked coming out of the undrafted free agent slot. And he's been a fan favorite in training camp, showing that he really deserves a spot on this roster. Garrett Dickinson has made some noise here and there, but I don't think it's to the level that CJ Conrad is. And Conrad, he plays, like I always said, a mini Evan Ingram with great blocking skills. So if he makes it onto this roster, I definitely could see him moving up to number two and being a great backup for Evan Ingram whenever we release Scott Simonson, if we do release, uh, I mean, Rhett Ellison, if we do release him. On to running back, obviously the starter, the best running back in the entire NFL, Saquon Barkley, being backed up by Wayne Gallman. Then, surprisingly, Paul Perkins and Rod Smith are both listed as a third. I thought it would have been something like Paul Perkins and John Hilleman, or maybe even just John Hilleman, because... Rod Smith, honestly, I could care less about him being on the Giants. Uh, no offense to him. I just think that he can't. There's nothing really he could bring to our team that another running back can't really bring to us. Uh, Paul Perkins, I kind of feel the same way, but he's had a good training camp. So who knows? Maybe there's something about him that I don't see. I mean, I'm not there with the coaches. They probably have a lot more notes on these. They definitely have a lot more notes on these players than I do. But... That third spot is definitely interesting. I didn't think Rod Smith would be that high up. And Elijah Penny, I think he's definitely going to make the roster as our fullback, which is definitely a dying position in the NFL. It's not even listed here on the offense. But he's a good fullback. Him and Rhett Ellison usually have those duties. And John Hillman was another undrafted free agent I really liked coming out of college. Uh, not sure how he's going to make it onto the roster. Like We have a pretty good running back group. If he does, I'll be glad. Then QB. Big, big QB, final on the offense right here. Eli Manning slated as a starter with Daniel Jones as his backup. Then Alex Tanney and then Kyle Oletta. And I've been saying this for a while in my training camp videos. I do think Kyle Oletta is going to get cut. And it's kind of sad to see it happen because ever since uh, that police incident back last season in like, what was it, week 9 or 10 or whatever it was, our bye week, ever since then... This guy has performed terribly on the field, and it just seems like he just hasn't been right in the head. Like, I, I guess mentally he's not there, because in the preseason and training camp last year, it was the complete opposite. Kyle looked good. He didn't look like a world beater or anything, but he looked like a good quarterback to have on your roster. And then since since that day, you know, threw th two picks in the Redskins game and whatnot, and then had terrible OTAs, uh, his training camp... It could have been better to say the least. I mean, he's been throwing the ball straight to the cornerbacks instead of the receivers, overthrowing balls, throwing it into empty space. He just hasn't looked like any level of an NFL quarterback. Maybe he just needs a different change of scenery. Who knows? But we're definitely not rolling into this season with four quarterbacks at the helm. And I think if we're going to cut one, it's going to be Kyle Loletta. Because Alex Tanney has looked good. You know, considering he is a backup role, he's looked good. Hopefully the best we could get out of Laletta is some type of trade piece. Maybe he'll go for a fifth or a sixth rounder. I don't know. I just wish him the best, man. But I don't see him anywhere on this Giants roster. So with the offense covered, let's move on to the defense. Starting off with uh, defensive line position. We got three defensive linemen here. Our three defensive line positions listed off. Obviously, we're running 3-4. The first one, BJ Hill backed up by RJ McIntosh. Then Freedom Akin Moladen. Akin Moladen. Akinmo Laden. Akinmo. I'm sorry for butchering your name, Freedom. I'm just going to call you Freedom. I'm not going to try to butcher that again. But this is as expected. I'm excited to see which RJ McIntosh could bring to the table, although I expect very limited snaps from him. In my opinion, the best part of our defense right now is definitely the defensive line. We have a top 15, top 10 defensive line group. 
with BJ Hill, Dylan Thomason, and Dexter Lawrence starting. He's very versatile, very big, very strong. All three of these guys can get sacks, more so BJ and Dexter than Dalvin. And all three of them could definitely stop the run. I'm really excited for this defensive line group, and I expect the three starters to have a lot of playing time. So I'm not sure how much we could say of RJ McIntosh. But we never did get to see a lot of him last year because of his injury coming off his rookie season. Hopefully we can see some good. Then at the next position, like I said, Dalvin Thompson backed up by John Jenkins and our seventh round pick Chris Slayton. Then Dexter Lawrence, Olsen Pierre, and Jake Serensa. If there's anybody on here that might get cut or put to the practice squad, I'd say it would be Freedom and Jake. Haven't really heard their name called that much, but definitely have heard of Olsen Pierre, John Jenkins, and Chris Slayton throughout training camp and throughout OTAs. Next up is the Sam linebacker position, or basically the strong side linebacker. Sam, um, just the football term for it, I guess. And this is something I am surprised by. We have Kareem Martin slated as the starter, followed by Marcus Golden. Sorry if you guys heard that in the back. Like, that's right outside my house. The garbage truck is coming in, but followed by Marcus Golden, Avery Moss, and Terrence Feed. Now, I actually expected Marcus Golden to be slated as the starter here with Kareem Martin as a backup and possibly O'Shane Zimenez also as the backup. But he's slated in at the will spot or the weak side linebacker. And I definitely think O'Shane's talents would be better used on the strong side than the weak side. That's just my opinion. And I also thought that Marcus Golden, given how Coach Betcher has spoken of him since we acquired him in free agency, I definitely thought he would have beat out Kareem Martin as the starter for that position. He's definitely, in terms of potential, has more than Kareem, but, you know, health issues and production over the past couple years have definitely sidelined him a little bit. You know, this is just the first unofficial one. Maybe he will be the starter when the uh, official one gets released. It needs to be finalized by August 31st. It would look very different from this right here. And since I already spoke about the weak side, might as well go over that. Lorenzo Carter as a starter, O'Shane Zimenez, Keon Adams, then Jake Carlock, and Joey a Fieri. I love to see that Lorenzo said as a starter, this was expected, and I expect great things from him this season, man. I mean, in limited sack snaps last year, this guy got five and a half sacks. His athleticism and speed, and now if you've seen him in the summer, he's bulked up quite a bit. I expect him to be a 10 sack player this year. Like, I definitely expect him to be a breakout player on the defense. Watch out for this guy, Lorenzo Carter. Opposing offenses might have nightmares about him. And then with the two inside linebacker spots we got Alec Ogletree and Tay Davis as our two starters with BJ Goodson Ryan Connolly as the second backup then Nate Stupar Jonathan Anderson and Josiah Tawefa this is how I expected it to be to be honest with you guys uh BJ Goodson and Tay Davis uh I really thought Goodson might have been the starter but Davis is somebody we got in 2017 I believe or was he a 2018 undrafted free agent either way he's shown to be great for his spot and had good potential more so than Goodson. Goodson is kind of a weird inconsistent player. He's like somebody great to have on primetime games. Those are always his best games. But during the regular like one o'clock Sunday games, he's kind of just a role player more than anything. And Josiah Toefa was another undrafted free agent I liked. Glad to see he breaks this uh, breaks into this roster here. Hopefully he could manage to improve and keep his spot. Now going on to the secondary. Left cornerback, DeAndre Baker stated as the slaughter star. Grant Haley as the backup, Corey Ballantyne, and then Ronald Zamort. Um, then on the right side, Janoris Jenkins, Antonio Hamilton, Sam Buell, and Henry Tolliver. Now obviously what you could take away from here is that they included the slot cornerbacks in Grant Haley and Henry Tolliver um, within the left and right side cornerbacks. Um, the starters are who I expected to be, Janoris and DeAndre. Uh, one thing that is interesting is that Sam Beal is listed as a third. We do know he was uh, slightly hampered again, slightly injured for the second time in his second year. I'm really interested to know if we're actually ever going to see Sam Beal play. I always wanted to see him play. I've had high hopes for him and mostly because we gave up a third round pick for him, getting him in the supplemental draft into 2018 season. I wanted to see what this guy's made of. And it's unfortunate that we never got to see his rookie year because of his injury. And now, right now, I think he has a hamstring strain or something. Don't know if he's ever going to play. And now that he's listed on um, number three on the cornerback uh, depth chart, he might have extremely limited snaps. 
Obviously, like I said, take into account they included the slot corners here. Maybe he'll get some playing time and we'll see what he's made of. One person that's not included here is Julian Love, who they listed as the second free safety. So the free safety spot, Antoine Bethay, then Julian Love, Kenny Ladder, and Tenny Adewusi. Love has shown great flexibility and apparently has shown a uh, great IQ from the free safety spot. According to Coach Shermer and Betcher, he's one of the best players they've seen for the cornerback spot that can make the transition to free safety and they expect great things from him. If he works out there, I have no problem with it. I just always thought it would have been better to have him at slot corner. These guys know way more than I do. I'm going to leave it up to them. And at the strong safety spot, we got Jabril Peppers, Michael Thomas, Sean Chandler. That went down exactly as I expected it. I think Jabril Peppers is going to have a great season for us, be one of our leading tacklers, and he definitely can cover some tight ends on like a former strong safety that we had. Now to quickly go over the special team spot. Uh, wow, this video is already at 16 minutes. I'm just going to run through this real quick. Uh, punter Riley Dixon with our backup Ryan Anderson. Long snapper Zach Diossi with a backup Tabor Pepper. Kick return Cody Latimer as I mentioned. TJ Jones and Corey Ballantines are his backups. And punt return Jabil Pepper, Golden Tate. TJ Jones, then Britton Golden, Darius Slayton. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about Cody Latimer and Jabil Peppers being on punt and kick return, and the only reason I'm unsure of it is because of injury concerns, not ability. Cody Latimer was known in Denver for his great kick return skills, and in the Browns in Cleveland, Jabil Peppers was their best punt returner in a long time. So I'm happy about that, just a little concerned about injury. But that's what I got for y'all today. This has already been a long enough video. Uh, just a quick report on the unofficial depth chart which has to be cut down to 53 mans and be finalized by August 31st. 31st. Uh, let me know what you all think, who you think is going to be cut, what you think about the starters. That's it, I'm out. Eer.